Video games are supposed to be hyper real, more than reality, above. But some missions go well above and beyond even that. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the most over-the-top missions in video games. Starting off at number 10, it's Uncharted 3's Stowaway. This is a an absolute classic. The Uncharted series has always been about over-the-top action, but arguably their most audacious and over-the-top moment happened around the mid point of the third game of the series, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. As usual, Nathan Drake is in a race to discover a lost city, this time the lost city of Ubar, or the Atlantis of the Sands. Shockingly enough, at no point during the game is the joke Sandlantis made. When he finds out the bad guys are airdropping supplies in the desert, he stows away in the supply plane. That's obviously when things go wrong. He basically gets immediately caught by somebody, and then in a panic, pulls the lever to open the cargo hold of the plane. So so things are already pretty out of control. Uh, you fist fight a guy on an open ramp in a moving plane, and Drake only manages to finish this guy off by releasing the cargo. So he has to climb his way back into the plane, then gets into a shootout with the guards inside the hold while cargo's flying all over the place around him, which eventually sparks a raging fire. The whole thing is pure chaos, and it actually really only takes a few minutes to play out in real time, and it's probably one of the shortest missions in the entire series. The plane starts crashing, and... And it's no wonder they pretty much used it wholesale in the new Uncharted movie. The only downside, at least for me, is that it's so chaotic and crazy that the first time I played it, I kept dying in the shootout, which kind of slowed down the pace and spoiled it a little. <laughs> Perfect. Number nine is Doom Eternal's Mars Core. It's a completely over the top game, Doom Eternal, but for the most part, the actual mission's pretty straightforward. Go here, kill that thing, and that's about it. There's one mission in Doom Eternal, however, that is as gloriously insane as they get, and it's a pretty awesome level to boot. Your main goal for most of this game is to locate these three hell priests and kill them, like standard Doom Guy stuff. Uh, the only problem is the last one is hidden deep in the core of the planet Mars this would normally be a pretty difficult place to get to, but remember what we're talking about here and who. It's Doom, and the Doom Marine has a kind of sledgehammer-style approach to problem-solving, and he's got a pretty big sledgehammer for use in this particular problem. So instead of trying to find some secret pathway to the Mars core, he just commandeers the BFG-10,000 cannon and... blows a hole in Mars. Now that alone would be over the top as it is, but the rest of the level has you platform through the chunks of Mars that you just blew up. So the concept is ridiculous, but it's it's actually so satisfying, it's hilarious. Just seeing how actual normal humans react to your guy is great too. Like nobody wants to stand in your way, even if you're going to blow up a huge chunk of Mars and no one wants you to do it. It's an all around awesome mission and by far the most ridiculous thing that's ever happened in a Doom property. I mean, other than the completely insane novelizations. And number eight is Marvel's Spider-Man Straw Meat Camel. That mission. Few games manage to merge open world elements and superhero spectacle as well as Marvel's Spider-Man, and this mission's like the perfect example of that. The whole thing starts out pretty simple. Some members of the Demon Gang are spotted near the Kingpin's property, so Spider-Man goes to investigate. After beating up some goons and checking around, one of Fisk's men says that the leader of the demons is about to get away on a helicopter, and things start to get wild. To stop it, Spider-Man Spidey webs a cargo container to the helicopter, but all he really manages to do is create a flying wrecking ball that rampages through the city. So as the helicopter tries to get away, the container just swings all over the place and smashes into like buildings and causes, well, a lot of damage and chaos. 
Did that just happen? Yeah. All the while you're dodging missiles, trying to pull off parts of the helicopter while enemies attempt to knock you off. The whole thing is like this incredible spectacle that's clearly meant to be one of the centerpiece moments of the whole game. And what's really impressive about it was how this whole scripted event took place in the actual open world and in a completely seamless manner. Like very few open world games actually bother causing damage to the environment. But this game went totally nuts with it and it made the mission all the better. And number seven is Call of Duty Black Ops 2, Cordis Day. Uh, there's so many ridiculous missions in the Call of Duty series, we could probably dedicate an entire list just to that. But for today, we're gonna narrow it down to one, at least for now. The penultimate mission to Black Ops 2 is absolutely nuts. Uh, if you don't remember it, the bad guy, Raul Menendez, successfully takes over the drone fleet and attacks Los Angeles. Like, things start off ridiculous from the get-go, with you in an armored car protecting the president from swarms of drones before being forced to exit and deal with the army of terrorists taking up the streets. So basically, it's just nuts at that point. Drones are attacking everywhere. There's people and cars running all over the place. It seems like everybody and their mother is in town for some reason, and they're all trying to assassinate the fictional president. Uh, really adding to the craziness, you eventually enter the pilot seat of a jet fighter who gets to dogfight with the drones while flying in between buildings. Um, and it doesn't end there. You're shot down, you're forced to parachute to safety afterwards, and it, it's shocking because as ridiculous as everything else is, they actually don't make you fight drone enemies on your way down. Like, I feel like maybe they thought that was a step too far, and I think that that's funny because the whole thing is pure chaos. The pacing in most Call of Duty games is, I mean, you could charitably call it relentless, but this mission is so nuts and throws so many crazy things at such a rapid pace, it, it, it almost melts your brain. And number six is Gears of War 2's Intestinal Fortitude, uh, the one with the giant worm. It's kind of less over the top in a crazy action way and more over the top in how audacious and gross it is. Uh, like, here's the rundown. There's sinking cities, there's a giant worm. Okay, that is what you need to understand. So now you're up to speed. What happens is that while trying to extract from the starting mission gone wrong, the squad is attacked and swallowed whole by this gigantic creature called the Rift Worm. So they're trapped inside and have to figure out a means of escape, which mostly involves crawling through the ruins of all the stuff that the creature has eaten, fighting off nasty creatures that live inside it, and eventually just straight up chainsawing its suitably enormous heart. The final sequence has you cutting through this creature's arteries while the room literally fills up with blood. And if you don't move quick enough, you can actually drown in this area. At the end, Delta manages to chainsaw their way out, and like literally chainsaw out of the creature from the inside. Um, but even after all that, the squad doesn't get to go home. They're just given new orders. Um, like at least let these guys take a shower. Can you imagine the kind of diseases a giant worm monster has? And number five is Saints Row the Third's Stag Film. Another series that is, it's literally about how over the top it can be. And once again, there's a ton to choose from here, but to be focused and, and narrow it down to probably the most insane moment I can think of is at the end of the third, completely out of nowhere, that the stag unit you've been fighting throughout the game have a helicarrier, and now they've taken over the city with it. There's multiple reasons this is nuts. For one, you only see this ending if during the final regular mission, you decide to go after Kilbane instead of rescuing Shondi. In any normal game, choosing to go after your personal vendetta over the lives of your friends would lead you to the bad ending, but not here. For the rest of the game, Stag is shown to be high tech, but they had like a standard carrier docked out in the harbor for most of the game. So this last minute reveal is that they're actually the evil shield, and it's totally wild, uh, and leads to one of the best missions of the game. And just like, it's hard to explain how wild this gets, but to get up there, you commandeer a jet, fight off enemy planes, land on it, plant bombs on it, fight off the bad guy, Cyrus Temple, and after you basically figure everything out and defeat him and, you know, complete the mission. Nice landing, Cyrus. Everything gets even more ridiculous having the end of the game where your dude, the boss, declares Steelport a city-state seceding from the USA. The fourth Saints Row game is in many ways even more over the top than this one, but just purely from all the stuff you do in it, this may be the most ridiculous mission in the entire franchise. 
And number four is Titanfall 2's The Ark. Uh, a lot of missions we're talking about today involve planes or flying, but that added element of danger of getting into combat while falling or flying makes a lot of these missions completely crazy. You can do this, Cooper. Just like before. Not exactly. There are significantly more variables to throwing between two moving platforms. Good luck. The Ark, the penultimate mission of Titanfall 2, isn't the best mission, but it's definitely the most wild, with you and your buddies assaulting an enemy's fleet mid-flight. So during this mission, you're jumping between ships, you're fighting off aircraft and soldiers on foot, and the whole thing is happening while you're rocketing through the air at mock speed. This whole time, you and your allies are harassed by Viper, an ace pilot, uh, which adds uh, another layer of chaos to it. There's just so many truly crazy moments in this mission. Mission. Like this part where you use a dropship as a platform to wall run into the enemy hangar. Or this part where you get in a free fall fist fight with Viper before exposing his cockpit and shooting him in the head. It's crazy. It's all around nuts. And it's, it's weird that it's well paced as well, but it is. And it's also incredibly entertaining. So really a great example of what we're talking about here. And number three is Minor Turbulence in Grand Theft Auto V. Yep, another airplane mission, but an absolute classic. In it, Trevor hears that some Meriwether security weapons are being transported on a cargo plane, which is currently circling around Fort Sancudo. In standard Trevor fashion, he goes all in on this one with no plans or backups. He just grabs a duster, which is basically a prop plane, and then decides to attack a heavily armed mercenary company's weapons transport. Now, if it weren't a Trevor mission, this would probably already be over the top but it is a trevor mission so things take a turn when trevor gets close to the plane which responds by opening the cargo doors and having soldiers fire rockets at you to get in you you ran the plane in the cargo hold get out and shoot any merryweather agents you see all while trucks stowed in the cargo section start getting sucked out of the plane around you then you take control of the plane which seems like it would be the end but then two fighter jets appear that shoot the plane down and force trevor to bail even in terms of some of the crazy missions that have appeared in previous gta games this is probably one of the craziest just from the pure audacity of hijacking a military transport with a crop duster and number two is Venus from the recent Wolfenstein games, which have their fair share of crazy stuff, but nothing beats the Venus mission. There's so much about this that's just bizarre, baffling even. To call it anything other than truly over the top would be absolutely wild. It'd be over the top itself. For one thing, it's set on Venus, like the planet Venus, uh, which you travel to on UFOs. Yep, why you're going there is simple, of course. The Nazis, who have taken over the world, in this universe have this fail-safe system called Odin that'll bring about the end of the world if a revolutionary movement manages to get too powerful. So you have to find the secret code to deactivate Odin before the revolution can really start. So how they get that is completely insane. BJ assumes the role of an actor auditioning for a propaganda film that is about him, which is a pretty ballsy move in of itself. And for some reason, it's being filmed on Venus. When you get to Venus, Elena. You find out the movie is actually being directed by Adolf Hitler, and what follows is a totally insane scene where the Fuhrer kills the other actors, pisses himself, and then is just generally gross and pathetic. Wolfenstein 2 is is already one of the craziest FPS games out there, but this mission really takes everything to the next level. And finally, at number one, Guardians of the Galaxies Into the Fire. This is a very recent one, but Guardians of the Galaxy may just have one of the most gloriously ridiculous final missions in any game we've ever seen. Like, it's, it really is something to see. At the end of the game, you and your team have to take on the Universal Church of Truth's massive temple ship. But you've got some help. Uh, an army of monsters led by Lady Hellbender, who attacked the fleet, guarding the place with swarms of bizarre space creatures while she rides around on a space 
space dragon. This is all, at very least, incredibly metal, but it does get wilder. You get saved by a giant space head piloted by a talking dog, and then get sucked into the vacuum of space, and then you have to ruin a little girl's birthday plan, which, yes, is actually something that happens after you get sucked into the vacuum of space. Like, you even smash a cake. The whole ending of Guardians of the Galaxy is a lot to take in, but it is a fantastic climax to a surprisingly good game. There are so many great and crazy missions out there that we're really only scratching the surface with this list, so if we're missing any of your favorites, consider this list of part one and click the like button. Of course, leave us a comment with feedback or missions you're interested in hearing us include in a future list. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Gaming Links.